take your worship right now. Stay to that place, man. in the midst of your worship, man. day has been today regardless of situations that you might find yourself in in this life I want us to rest in heaven tonight is that all right if we could just rest in heaven right here right now as we set before our king Alpha, he's Omega, man. He's beginning and end. And he longs to hear from you tonight. That's incredible to me. So if we could just take a little bit more time with Jesus. begin to just praise the Lord with me man come on and just begin to just magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords hallelujah hallelujah God we give you praise tonight God we give you glory God we celebrate you you are Lord of all hallelujah God God we thank you for your presence tonight God, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your amazing grace that you would consider us tonight to be worthy enough to, to be in your presence. We thank you, Daddy.
God, as we go forth in this service tonight, God, we're getting out of the way. Yes, God. And God, we ask, Lord God, as we're making room for you, that you would just fill this place up, God. And tell us nothing left. God, allow us to have an encounter with your glory. God, speak the way that you would. Speak the way that you would have us to hear you. Do what you would have us to see. God, help us to be still in you. So we won't lack anything that you have for us tonight, man. God, so I'm asking that you would just remove anything that is not of you in its place tonight. God, any unclean thing, Lord God, anything that's, that shouldn't take residence in our lives, God, I pray, God, that you would just remove it even now. God, I plead the blood of Jesus from the ceiling to the floor, God. God, from the top of our head to the soles of our feet, Lord. God, cover us. God, give us the blood blast in the anointed blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God, make all things new tonight. Within us, first and foremost, God, and even in the midst of our loved ones, Lord God, our families, Lord. God, our communities, our workplace, our schools. God, flood, flood everything that we represent, God, with the blood of Jesus. That your presence may accompany us. Yeah. In everything that we do, Lord. God, I thank you for the man of God who is about to come up and deliver your word. A word that I trust that you have given to him. God, that you would give him the liberty to be able to manifest you here in this place tonight, God. God, I pray for the spirit of boldness, Lord God, to take over. Yeah. God, that he will speak your word in this season. God, we thank you and we praise you for what you're about to do in this place. Even the more. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all give God a, a hand clap of praise. Amen. Praise the Lord. How's everybody doing? It's a little loud. You said keep it close. It's like, ah. You want me to pull it out here for you? Is that good? Yeah, I can be loud enough. It's all good. Um, so, yeah, just thank you for coming. Um, Dare Challenge, man. Love you guys so much. I think about you a whole lot more than what you'd ever realize. Um, I just bless you very much, man very very much um, so tonight let, let's uh, let me uh, let me backtrack a little bit I think that would probably be a little bit better so probably what has it been last few months I've been really really off if you would it's been kind of uh, a rough time, a rough season for myself, if you would. Uh, I've been very much, I would say, my own worst enemy. And just so happens that's the name that I titled the sermon tonight is Your Own Worst Enemy. Because that seems to be a lot of people's biggest problems, is yourself. And... And I get that there's spiritual things that play into a lot of this. You know what I mean? There, you know, 
But um, but I know myself, I've glorified that way too much in the past, probably in the present. Try to find, you know, something to blame it on, somebody to blame it on, whatever. But then I always come back to realize that I'm the one that has to choose whether I contend, whether I truly contend, fight, literally fight for my faith each and every day, whether I fight for the people beside me. Whether I realize who I am or not, it's my choice. I get to choose that, which to me is a major privilege. And, you know, it's one of those things God, He tells us who we are, which is amazing in itself as well. Um, I just love it when I do hear God's voice and when He tells me, I love you. You know, that that's just one of the most precious things. And when He tells me that I'm worthy or... Just, uh, I mean, any of the many sweet things you could imagine God whispering to you, just actually hearing Him do it. <laughs> you know, and He just, He tells us nonstop about who we are, the authority that we have in Him, how we can just operate in Him, be with Him, do it together. I just love the fact that my God's like that, that He's just a together God. You know, he's just, he's not, hey, you go do this, even though we are supposed to do it, but he's just like, we're going to do this. You know, he's not, he's not like, hey, I'm just going to do this without you because, well, then we wouldn't have, probably wouldn't serve him. You know, I mean, truthfully, I wouldn't. That would just be boring. I don't want to watch you. I want to do something too, right? But um, a lot of times we catch ourselves making excuses to not do something. And that's, uh, I've caught myself doing that a lot lately too. It's like I know who I am in Christ. But yet I'll sit here and talk myself out of something. I'll sit here and talk myself out of why I should go pray for that person on occasion. Or, you know, just why? You know, I'll start asking myself, why? Why? Why this? Why that? And then I just realized that there is no why. There's just Him. The whys don't matter. There's no... It's not going to solve anything when you go asking why. Is it good to ask questions? Yes, all the time. I love asking questions. Um, honestly, I like, I like picking God's brain. I, sometimes I like arguing with Him, if you want me to be completely honest. Sometimes I really enjoy arguing with God. He's always right, though. I've come to figure that out a lot. Um... <laughs> Even when I think I'm right, God knows I am wrong. Um, and that in itself is just, honestly, at the end of the day, it's just fun, you know. And it's, and it's okay, so don't be ashamed if you've ever called yourself arguing with God. And he's your daddy. How many of y'all argue with your parents? Or how many of your kids argue with you? You still love them, right? You know? We can't, I mean, maybe some of us might hit them in the head a couple times here and there just to make them remember who they're talking to, but I don't know. But, um, and no, I've never actually hit my kids like that, just so nobody actually thinks I did that. Um, it's funny, tonight, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, I love the way, I love the fact that we've been on diversity a lot, that what has been something really big in Pastor Rob's heart is just we're all different, we all do everything differently. We all speak differently, you know, we all sing differently, we all work differently, we all do things different. And as I'm sitting here preparing for this sermon tonight, it just is funny. Amy asked me last night, she's like, babe, are you ready? I'm like, I guess. I don't know. She's like, babe, I'm like, I'm good. She's, she's like, are you sure? Is it, you know, basically is it written down? You know, and it's like that's, I don't have, I, can, I don't, I'm not, you know, it's not easy for me to write something out and then follow it because that's just not how my heart goes. Anytime I go somewhere with God, I love it because he's always like, I need you completely unabandoned. I need you completely in me, completely trusting what I'm about to tell you, where I'm about to tell you to go, and how I'm about to tell you to do it. And um, and I've, I've come to realize that that it really is my choice whether I go and do it or not, um, whether I get in my own way, if you would. And I can't count the times that I've gotten in God's way, you know, when I've, I've literally been my own worst enemy, if you would. Um, 
and it just amazes me how whether I go or whether I don't, it all wraps up with me believing who I am or whether I don't that day or that moment. I've come to realize that me being my own worst enemy when that happens is me questioning my identity in Christ. This is like identity part was just real sitting real heavy on me for the past few days. Um, I think it was actually, I can't remember what day it was this week, but it just, God was just speaking to me about tonight and he was just like identity. He was like, that's, and it wasn't just about tonight. Everything that's coming from my heart tonight, everything that's, that just God has placed on my heart for tonight is just everything that I've personally been going through too. You know, but it's stuff that he's been ministering to me about first, you know, because I don't believe that I could be up here if it's not in my life first. Um, I'm not going to come up here and ever speak about something that I don't have no understanding of because I just don't see how that makes sense. Um, but identity is something that is just a major key in our lives. Something that we do talk about some, you know, and sometimes we don't. It's something that I've personally had. It just gets lost uh, on occasion. It just, it seems to just disappear. And I, I don't think about it as much as I should. And I'm like, you know, question this and question that. And what am I doing here? And what am I doing there? And just getting real angry about things that I shouldn't be getting angry about and frustrated and aggravated and whatever else you want to say. And, um, and I've just come to realize that my identity when I believe and truly am fixated, when my identity is in Christ, when I am 100% convinced that it's Him all the way, that it's us all the way each and every day, then I understand that inside I do a lot better. I understand that inside of me I do way better. No matter what's around me, no matter how my home life may be, whether my kids are arguing with me, me and my wife are disagreeing, whether my baby wakes up 10 times in a night when he should be sleeping through the night every single night by now, you know what I mean? It just doesn't matter. Whether I come to church and I, I just I, I see somebody and I'm like, man, I just don't really like what they're saying right now. Or, you know, it could be a lot of things. Hey, baby. Amy. Uh, she can come back. He's okay. Um... Anyway, um, and then always remember to just a quick side note, anybody that's in here, your family is always your first. You know, you can do a million things. You can have a million ministries, but if you don't take care of your home, you're not taking care of anything. Um, but anyway, so it just one of the things that I, I, I continue to come back to is my identity and something that God really instilled in me heavily a few years ago. And then God started operating in me in different ways and different gifts. And then I felt like, was like the, the things that I was operating in ceased or I didn't see them as much as I wanted to. And I got discouraged. And over the past few years, in reality, not just the past few months, but over the past two or three years, I've noticed myself slowly just slacking off of the calling that he's had on my life. You know, just not believing what I stood so firm in once, not kindling that fire that's inside of me to just burn for him each and every day to just burn for the people that are around me um and you know it's taking a toll on my family it's taking a toll on myself it's taking a toll i'm sure on my church family in just ways that i honestly don't know right this second and i don't know that I, in a way i don't know that i want to because it would probably demolish my heart and i say that because when we're not doing good inside we tend to affect the people around us on the outside so, and you know, it's funny, I'm sitting here thinking about identity and talking about it, and the whole time, I just always, it's just funny how nervousness or fear, or, it's like, it tries to get to you even while you're trying to do something simple like talk. You know, and it's one of those things, and I know I'm not the only one that, that battles with it when you're one-on-one -on -one with somebody. Uh, I mean, I, the same way I am right now is typically the same way I'm in front of just one person. I just want to know God's wo voice for them. I want to know what He wants for their life. I want to see them healed. I want to see their family, you know, families together, whatever it may be. But I always catch myself battling, like, are you, are you, can you do that? Is that actually good enough? Are they going to get healed? Should you even pray for him? You're just not feeling right today. 
And a lot of those thoughts, man, they're not your thoughts, too. No, a lot of them really not. Now, you can play into them, and that gets really dangerous, too. But the thing is, is anytime I've come to realize and believe now, and now I have zero excuses if I don't do something, I just I take it up with myself, and God takes it up with me later. But I know for a fact that God wants to fulfill everything he's ever said he wants to fulfill in your life and in the people around you. And he wants you to do it knowing who you are. He wants you to do it knowing that he is the one who will contend for you even when you don't want to contend for him. That he is going to speak your identity to you each and every day. That he's going to send people around you who are going to love you, who are going to take care of you, who are going to minister to you in ways that you may not even know were possible. But it's up to you to get out of the way, to not be your own worst enemy, and to, to actually receive what he has for you. Because I can't count the times in this walk, in this season of my life, where I was just going down, going down, going down. I can't count the times in people who have spoken to my life, but I just honestly, there were times where I really wanted to hear it. I just wasn't willing to receive it. And then there were times where I just straight up didn't want to hear it because I was so mad. And then my wife actually asked, uh, asked me, it's funny how your spouses tend to call you out on things that you don't even realize. They know you so well. She said, <clears throat> are you angry? I'm like, are you angry at God? I was like, man, with all the issues I've been trying to figure out about me, I never thought about that. It's like, am I mad at God? Well, I don't have a reason to be mad at God, and I guess that kind of overrid anything else. It's like, I don't know. You know, I really don't know. And I was like, God, am I mad at you? Yeah, I think you are. But why? You know, right? It's like, why? Because I'm not getting what I want. My life isn't going the way that I thought it should go. You know? You know, every, anything at home, anybody that has a family, things could always be more perfect. Your finances could always be way better off than what they are. You know, there things could, prophetic words that were spoken over your life that you assume were supposed to happen instantly or within days or weeks or months or even years. You don't know when that stuff's going to actually come into fruition. You don't know when it's going to actually take place. And I realized that I'd actually, in my own heart, not even really knowing it, have been angry at God for quite some time because... I wasn't feeling like he was fulfilling everything he was supposed to when he was supposed to. And it was because I believed that he was going to be doing something different. Or I believed that he was going to fulfill these things. But when I believed it, I thought it was going to be soon. And maybe even not even now, but soon. And then that soon got longer and longer and longer and longer. And there's some things that, there's actually a bunch of things that still aren't where I know God said they're going to be. But I'm glad they're not right this second. Because I would have never understood the reality that if I can't trust Him with nothing, then I will never trust Him with everything. And that's important. Because like Paul said, he said that I am content with what I have. Whether I have a little, whether I'm hungry or whether I'm full. Whether he has a little or a lot, no matter what's going on. Whether he's in prison, bound in chains, shackled, literally, I mean, think of the most disgusting jail cell you could ever picture, no running, whatever, you know, just horrible conditions, beaten, bruised, content. Or if he's out with his buddies, you know what I mean, having people apply for him like believers should do for one another. Dude, happy, content, right? But he had to learn that process. Even Jesus learned the things that we're learning right now. He learned obedience even to the point of death. And it's just crazy to me that Jesus learned obedience in our body. <laughs> you know what I mean? Jesus learned obedience. And then I always catch myself when I do come against myself is I tend to picture my failures. And for those of us that understand the power of what you ponder on, it, it can have really bad effects on you. 
I had somebody speak over my life a handful of months ago at my mom's church. One that I, I mean, I, I, they're totally like another family to me. I love them so much. But I went there to receive prayer because I knew I was off. I was just like, man, I need something. And they prayed, and one of the things they said is, you've got to let go of your failures, the failures of your past, something I knew I'd been holding on to. I didn't want to admit it, but I had been. And something up until recently I've been gripping and clinging to because I really I don't know. I don't know why. The reason I say I don't know why is because there's no good reason to. But you're, when you're doing that, you're looking for an excuse to justify how you feel, why you feel the way you feel, and why whatever. I mean, in reality, just whatever. You're trying to find an excuse. And the fact is, is you can be your own worst enemy or your greatest asset. Obviously, other than God, He is always your greatest because He loves you more than you love yourself or anybody else could love you. But the fact is, is you can stand in His way and in your way, or you can get out of the way and allow Him to be everything inside of you, and you can allow you to be everything in Him that you ever dreamed of, plus like 100 billion quadrillion, because it just, He thinks that far out. So a lot of what my heart is for tonight and for what... I know that I've been struggling with and what I find a lot of believers struggling with is just continually who we are. And um and I've just been asking God for some scriptures. <coughs> and it was funny cuz I just I kept thinking there were certain ones he wanted and anyway, it wasn't until earlier this evening that he actually gave me one that he wanted to use, and it comes out of Matthew 4 and the temptation of Jesus because obviously Jesus is the most perfect example we can use for anything in this life. And I'm going to start with verse, actually let's just start, well I didn't give you, tell you to put one and two up there, but I'm going to do one and two and then I'm going to go on through verse 11. It says, And Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And just remember, you're going to be tempted. You're going to have things that are going to come into your life that are going to try to, try to throw you off. But on Matthew 4, chapter, uh, verse 1, it was verse 1, verse 2, And after he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he then became hungry. I like how it says he then became hungry. Sorry, it's just funny. Um, I'm hungry after like the first 10 minutes. And then 3, you've got 3, right? Okay, so we'll, we'll, now y'all can follow along on the screen. And the tempter came and said to him, if you, if, if you are the Son of God, if you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. And I don't know, go back, go back, please. Go back. It just amazes me, if. How many times have we heard this in our own lives? How many times have you heard this today? If, if you're good enough. If, if, are you really God's son? Are you, are you really who you think you are? Are you really gifted? If, if you are. No, 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 it's who I am. Anytime you hear that, declare in Jesus' name, I am a child of God. I am a son of God. I am a daughter of God. I am who he says I am. Declare it and believe it. And when you don't believe it, declare it that much more. Because if you only declare it when you feel it, you're going to keep falling. You're going to keep stumbling. You're going to smoke your head. I know because I've done it. You have to contend. That's what content. Contending is fighting. You, you've got to fight. And I mean fight and fight and fight. Especially when you don't feel like fighting. And that's something I realized I'd like off too. That's one of the things where I was getting in my own way is I wasn't fighting for me anymore. I wasn't fighting for what I knew. I was just fighting with God, which is stupid. But I wasn't fighting the right way. And when you fight for what you believe, you fight whether you feel good or not. For anybody, let's just think of like a military scene. When you've got guys sit. Literally soldiered up beside one another. 
you got a battle formation. Every one of them have their guns loaded, ready to go. Got the enemy troops. They know where they are. They're going to go get them. Or even better yet, they're stationary knowing that their enemy troops probably going to come get them. And then the enemy comes, completely surrounds them. When, do you think for a second that they're just going to stop and let the enemy tear them all to pieces? Or do you think they're going to fight? And do you think for one second that they're just fighting for the God beside them or just themselves? They're fighting for everything that they love and everything that they believe in. So when you're fighting for you, you're fighting for your family. When you're fighting for you, when you're fighting for your family, you're fighting for your brothers and you're fighting for your sisters. So when you're fighting for the faith that's in Christ, when you're fighting for your identity to actually believe what you don't really believe right now, when you're telling yourself this over and over and over, even if you're having a problem understanding that it's true, then God's going to use that and He's going to work that into you. And He's going to really set those roots. You're going to dig deeper and dig deeper and dig deeper. Until you get to a point to where, hey, you could just, you'll just think it so much that it really becomes a part of your life. But then you have to understand that you can't just assume that it's all good once it becomes a part of your life and that you just got to go on to the next page. You got to keep those simple things intact. So what I've had to do this past week or so is just really go back to the simplicities of Christ. Instead of trying to think of this or that or what's this and what's wrong, I just had to go back to the basics. And I realize I have to do that a lot, and I don't do it enough. It's just the basics. When I say the basics, I mean just remembering that I'm God's son. That he actually loves me more than what I could even remotely imagine. And thankfully, I have a son now. I've actually, in reality, got three. Got two stepsons, and that, and the little one you just saw get pushed out of here. But any of them, I would do anything I could for them. And I do know that 100%. And it's just cool having being brought in as a stepdad to teenagers and then having a baby of my own and just the look in, in their eyes. So like me and my stepkids didn't have a very good relationship to start off with. And now we we're a lot way better than what we were, thank God. But um, but God actually taught me, oh God, it, it's just amazing what God will teach you with a family. Um, and anyway, sorry, that just distracted me for a second. I, I, I love my family and they just... Yeah. Um, all right. But remember, fighting, contending, fighting and contending for who you are isn't just for you. It's not. It's it's literally for everyone around you too. All right. So I guess verse four. But he answered and said, "It is written." Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So every word that God is speaking proceeds every, one that, every word that's coming out of his mouth. It's not just what he said, it's what he's saying right now. It's what he's going to say to you tonight, what he's going to say to you tomorrow. Proceeds, it's, it's still coming. Then the devil took him into the holy city and had him stand on the pinnacle of the temple. And said to him, if you are the son of God, there it is again, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and on their hands, they will bear up, bear you up so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus said to him, on the other hand, it is written, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test. So there, one of the things I love about that little section and that temptation, the devil comes to again, if, if you are the Son of God. Jesus is like, don't test the Lord your God. Oh, wow, that actually just hit me. Shucks. So, if we, right, right. That just, like, revelation drop. Bam! I love it. Um <laughs> Okay, so basically what I just gathered out of that is if we actually believe something other than what God said, we're putting his word to the test. Jesus said, don't do that. Yeah. Wow, that hurt. <laughs> I straight up that hurt. <laughs> oh God, I've been doing that way too much. All right. I have some repenting to do later, just so we're clear. 
right. Yeah, sorry, that one, that's still messing with me. All right. Jesus, thank you, forgive me. All right, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory and said to him, all these things I will give you if you fall down and worship me. I'm actually, I didn't give you this one either, but this one just popped in my head. So I'm going to read that one more time, though. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. Oh, it's the devil speaking to Jesus. If you go to, uh oh, can I find it? Psalms. I believe it was chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2. I'm going to start with verse... I'm going to start with verse 6. But as for me, I have installed my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. I will surely tell of the decree of the Lord. He said to me, and this is God speaking to His Son, speaking to Jesus, You are my Son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me, and I will surely give the nations as your inheritance, and the very ends of the earth as your possession. You shall break them with a rod and an iron, with a rod of iron. You shall shatter them like earthen, or, yeah, earthenware. Anyway, but I like how God, before the devil even came to Jesus, God's already told Jesus this. Right? He already said, I didn't, honestly, man, so I was reading Psalms earlier today, just sat on my, hey, read Psalms. It's like, okay, what? Started one, I was like, nope, two. I was like, oh. I was like, that goes right along. But it just is crazy to me because I didn't even realize I was there. I'm serious. I really didn't. And I was like, that's so cool. I was like, do you know, God already, but isn't that funny how God tells us these things all the time and then all the time and we realize that we're the ones being, you know, we're having this thought coming through our mind that's not even close to what he said. It's actually really, let me rephrase, I guess, technically, depending on the circumstance, it could be really close, but it's really perverted. It's not even anywhere near close to how God meant it. So anyway, I'm going to keep going. All right, then it says, um, I'm going to start back with verse 10. Then Jesus said to him, Go, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and, to, and began to minister to him. So one of the things I love about Jesus is he was so secure in his self. He was so secure in his self and who his father uh, is and was at that time that as God promised him the king, the earth, everything, prior to the devil ever trying to convince him otherwise, or I'll say convince him otherwise, telling him the exact same thing, because in reality, the devil still had dominion over this earth until Jesus took the keys back. So at this point in time, the devil could have given it to Jesus. But, and in reality, this would have been a lot more simple. All he had to do was just hit his knees and say a few words like Jesus you know what I mean but Jesus knew that he'd much rather endure the cross he would much rather endure any pain he would much rather endure the fact that he was going to be ridiculed mocked hated spit on slapped on he'd much rather endure that than to take the easy way out I mean that that personally speaks to me because I know that I'm quick to want to find an easy way out. I mean, I really am. You know, my finances are jacked up. I just want a big bag of money. You know what I mean? It's like me and Amy are disagreeing. I just want a unicorn to come in the room because she'd be happy. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, seriously, it sounds silly, but she likes unicorn. Dude, she would forget that I was wrong for that minute and be like, yes, ah, it'd be great. So, you know, but I mean, it just, it's, it's the process. 
And in the process, you've got to stay out of the way of what God's doing and actually just work with God instead of against God and instead of being against yourself. Because when you're against Him, you're against you. And it just, it, it, it's just, it's amazing how often we find ourselves doing this, or at least I find myself doing this. But thankfully, over this past week, a lot has changed in me. That's the only reason I believe I can stand up here right now. And I just say that to, to say this as well, is that if anybody's in that same spot, or you know somebody that is, obviously things can change. And when you go to encourage somebody, don't assume that they're going to change just like that. Because I can't count the people where I'm all excited in Jesus and every my season's good and I'm just like, yeah! And then they're just still stuck. Man, stay there. Stay with them. Stay excited and current, whatever you are. Stay there, but don't forget that they're just hurting right now and that they have to see for themselves what God's saying to them, that they actually have to push through this themselves as well. But understand that your words, your love, what you're doing for them, when you're contending, you're contending for them, it doesn't go unnoticed by them. It doesn't go void even if they tell you that they hate you, they don't want you around them. No matter the worst thing they could possibly do to you or say to you, it doesn't go unnoticed because they will think about these things later. Yeah. It's a fact. I know I've been that one to do it. I know there's a lot of yes going on, so obviously I'm not the only one, yeah. thankfully. Yeah. And it just just fight should have named the sermon fight So I guess one of my questions today is, is just, what do you believe? Do you believe you're your own worst enemy? Or do you believe that you're your greatest asset? Do you believe that God is your enemy? Do you believe that God loves you? Do you believe that the people that are surrounding you are your enemy? Or do you just believe that maybe they're actually there for you? And I guess the biggest question is, is just how do you want to believe? Because I could choose to believe that I want to stay in my own way. That I want to stay. Because I've been, I, I honestly, I've been feeling like this for a while. Like I actually, I didn't mind being in my own way for a short period of time just because, like I said, I could justify it. But the thing is, is I chose to think that way. So how are you going to choose the thing today? How are you going to choose the thing tonight? How are you going to choose the thing tomorrow? When the good feelings, the good vibes are gone. Not say vibe, whatever. But when you just when the feeling is gone. Because that's when you find out where your heart really sits. That's when you find out how your mind actually functions. Is when you're faced with just the unbelievable, the unimaginable, the things that in reality none of us should ever go through. How do you choose to believe? Once again, God gave us free will. He gave us a choice. He gave us a choice to trust Him or not. He gave us a choice to receive His love or not. He's still going to love us, so don't get me wrong. You can't really get around that. He's going to chase you down. But it is still your choice to receive what He has for you. And when God speaks, this is just something that was really, really set and heavy on me too. Listen. Sounds simple, right? It is. But when God speaks, listen. And don't take it lightly. Because I did that once. I know for a fact once. Something that was spoken over my life. And I altered it, if you would. Because I thought I was being humble. And I wasn't. It was false humility, but it felt like humility. And that one thing never came fulfilled. And with everything else the way it lined up, it should have by now. But the thing is, is it's God's word is powerful. 
And that's another thing is just don't and, and, and understand when I say that, don't live in if, if you can think of times where you messed up or you've done something that you shouldn't have or you just didn't listen to God, whatever. Just understand that He's He still loves you and that He can do better still than what you could imagine. Yeah, that's right. He's way better than anything you've ever messed up with. He's way better than what anything than any bad thing somebody could say. He absolutely is passionately and truly madly in love with you. I feel like Pastor Frank saying that because he says that a lot. Yeah, but I just thought of him when it came out of my mouth. <laughs> but um, it, it's just true. And you know, and one of the things that that really encouraged me and does encourage me is when I see like Pastor Rob when he was going through recently. You know. He did what he needed to. I mean, in reality, he wasn't scared to say what he needed to say. He wasn't scared to admit he was going through, you know? But when your brothers and your sisters do that around you, don't take that lightly either. Because you're like, ah, oh, we're, we're in Jesus, man. We're not supposed to be crying about our problems. Man, talk about them. Find that person that you actually trust. Talk about them. And understand they might not even get it right. But just take that encouragement. Talk to somebody. When somebody else is talking, listen. Because you don't know how bad they might need you to just listen. Yeah. That's, real. That's one of the biggest things we could do for one another is just shut your mouth and just listen to the guy or the girl beside you. Because that's a lot of times that's just what people need. And if God puts something in your heart, awesome. But don't think that you have to just give this amazing advice. It's just it's not it's not it's not true all the time if you would. There are times where actually not long ago I went to pastor's office and I was at the end of my road. You know? I I literally and this was about a month or so ago. This was it was about a month ago. Yeah. I was in there, but I just laid just to make a long story short, I laid everything out. I told him every surface problem I could think of, every problem I could think of. I was just like, dude, I'm done. You know, like I'm done. And he was like, Okay. He just sat back for a minute. He thought, you know, he didn't he wasn't quick to respond. And then one of the things he said is, Okay. Well, we're going to, well, hey, well, I would advise you, try this, this, and then you're going to preach on Wednesday night. It's like, what? It's like, I just told you all these problems. But he's just like, it's okay. Yeah. So even when you're questioning yourself, your identity, you think you're exceedingly weak, as the gospel says, God will take your weaknesses and turn them into strengths. If you talk to me one-on-one -on -one and you hear me, and I don't know what y'all think tonight's going like, but when I speak one-on-one -on -one and I'm trying to tell a story and ask anybody that really knows me, I suck at telling stories. <laughs> suck. And I'm okay with that. Even though I do like the idea of being that cool person at the party or, you know, around the church that could just tell all these cool stories and people are like, wow. No, no, it's not me. I just don't even try anymore. I straight up. Sometimes I'll get a good one and I'm just like, yes, I'm going to really stop right now. I got that one that I don't ever really get. But it just, it, it, it's, God will take the things that you really, really think that you are horrible at and he'll transform them into something that you can be amazing in. And before Christ, I didn't want to talk to you. I wanted to be stuck in my house 24-7 doing drugs drinking, having sex, whatever. But I wanted to be in my house. I didn't want to be near you. I didn't want to be in a club. I hated all that. I was so paranoid. So paranoid. I just wanted to be in my house. I was good. Now, I like chilling with my family, but I like being out too. You know what I mean? Like, I like being around people. And I just say that because it's like all the things that you, you really did have weaknesses in, man. God will transform those things in your life. So anything you think you're weak in, just basically go ahead and expect that God's going to use it. Yeah. Don't be like, God can't use me there because that's the first place he wants to do it because then you can't take credit for it. Amen. You know? And that's part of your identity in him too is trusting him. Yeah. That's how we continue to contend for the faith, fighting for the faith. Yeah. Oh, and I can, I, we can do this. I can't, but we can. Yeah. 
You know, you in me. Not you in me. Us. Yeah. And it's easy to forget sometimes when you're going through something hard. So, um... <laughs> Just remember who you are more than anything in this world I truly believe that that is one of the most fundamental things ever is really believing who we are and please forgive me because I'm guessing that Wednesdays go normal like Sundays usually get the worship team back up here close out on a song and all that stuff would y'all like to come up I have not been here on a Wednesday night since they've started back so another confession I just this first one I've been to but um, you know what I love too, and I and I just say that, and in watching the growth of my pastors as well, is that not one time have they judged me for not being here, or said, hey, you you know what, man, we're just not gonna let you go up this Wednesday because you ain't been here. You know what? They're hoping that this is gonna encourage me to keep coming starting next Wednesday. <laughs> But it's just one of those things, they just love you. And and I know a lot of times we, we uh, and now I'm going to brag on y'all for a minute, but it, it just, I remember when I started here seven years ago, but they ain't look like they do now, straight up. It was three years into this thing, and it was some things that were honestly kind of rough. I thought they were the most amazing people in the world, and in a lot of ways I still do. But when I tell you that whole thing about Frank and being patient and just waiting to speak and stuff, man, when I used to go into his office, he always had an answer before I could finish talking. I felt like that anyway. Now, a lot of that could have been me, so don't understand that. It could have just been me a lot of it, too. But that's how I felt. But my point is, is that, like, we all grow together. That's the beauty in it, man. We all grow together. We all get to help each other discover our identity in Christ. Discover what God's called us to do. It's not about, it's funny because it's not about where we're at, it's about where we're going. Where we're at is important, yes, but where we're going and what our sights are actually set on, that's key. And think about, take time tonight and just think about where are you going, where do you want to be more than anything in this world? Then ask yourself, is that, is that where God wants me? If you're like, yes, okay, awesome. Then how do you get me there? How do we do this together? How do we do this with me actually believing that I am who you say I am? How do we do this in the midst of the pain, in the midst of the trials, in the midst of the times where we just don't know what to expect? In the midst of when God's just saying, I just want you to have faith, because that's what faith is. And without faith, you can't please God, right? But I used to let that verse play in my head so negatively. Because I'm like, well, I'm just being faithless. I'm not pleasing God. Then woe is me again. And it's just, just stop. Stop. It's not like that with Him. Only we can twist. Well, I mean, obviously the enemy does it too. But I'm just saying, it's like, don't, don't, just don't, just let it be simple. Let the gospel be simple. Let God be who He is. And just remember just to be who you are. Get it wrong. If you can't fail, you'll never get it right. So if anytime you fail, you just continue to just cry and run away, understand something. I just suggest you turn around and come back as fast as you possibly can. Because we have to remember that failing is part of growing. We're going to mess up. I don't like admitting it, but I know I'm gonna mess up. You can ask my wife. It happens probably a lot. But it's okay. It's okay. Just go further and deeper the next time so you just don't fall back into that same slump again. And stop thinking that things have to happen when you think they should happen. I'll speak to myself really, 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 truly there it just I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna pray can we do something as a family can I have everybody come up here 
please. If, if you're, you know, if you're just completely against it, it's fine. But just if you're willing, come on. Well, I don't want to force you. I want you to actually just do it because you want to. I mean, truly. It's more fun that way. The tighter, the better. Come on, y'all come too. It's okay. Y'all, y'all, what? I say y'all could go back before I'm done praying. <laughs> awesome. I know this is going to feel like I'm pressing and asking too much to be closer. This is just what's really in my heart right now. It's just truly closeness, man. This is being brothers and sisters in Christ. Like, truly just being there. Just really getting close. It's okay. I promise. It's totally okay. We need it. Family. <laughs> Family. It's funny. God, we just thank you right now. We just worship you, God. We praise you. Father, we just give thanks for family. God, I thank you for every person that is standing before you today. And Father God, I just, I just pray right now, Lord, that you would just show them who they are. I just pray that in every heart right now, it just screams surrender to you. Surrendering the problems. Surrendering the woe is me's. Surrendering the what ifs and whys. Just surrendering everything that we think and letting it come into obedience to you and to your thoughts and how you think and what you want and the way that you want it. And no, it's not a dictatorship when we do that. It's just truly, it's just truly a blessing. It's 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 being it's how a father and a son thinks together. How a father and a daughter think who are love, who just love each other. Because if you're with your spouse, if you are with your kids, it is just how you become to think. You think a lot alike, and that's how God is with us. That's the reason why it's so important to seek Him out, to understand Him, to know His words, to know His voice. It's because we have, we just want to be like Him. That's the joy in it, is that we want to do that. It's not a forced thing. It's because we want to. We want to be like our daddy because He's so good. Because His love is so convincing in itself. His love is so compelling when it happens. His love overtakes everything. His presence. If you have anybody in your life that you love, just think about how much you love being in their presence. And then think about how much He loves being in your presence. And that you have the honor to just desire to be in His presence that much more as well. And all He wants to do is be present with you always. has anything that they just need prayer for, I would just ask that you would just find somebody beside you. If you're willing. If not, there will be some other people that will be glad to pray with you because I don't want to like it. Once again, I just, uh, if for those that just want this, I just want you to want it and I just want us to receive it. And for those uh, and I get being uncomfortable with just having anybody pray for you, I understand that as well. But just for those who are willing to grab a brother or sister saying this beside them, just to pray, pray. For those that need to come up here, they need to stay up here and actually just have others pray with you and for you. That's awesome too, man. No matter how we do it, it's just all about Jesus. It's all about that breakthrough. And right now in my heart, it is it's, it is breakthrough because that's something that's been happening around here a lot lately. And that's what God wants. He wants us to break through. He wants us to thrive. So, Father, we just thank you right now, God. We just thank you for every person. We just thank you for every voice. And we just speak life into their hearts. We speak life into their minds. We speak life into their homes. We speak life into the wall that has been holding them back. 
We just command every wall to break in Jesus' name. We command the brick that we're trying to put up top next to be broken. We command that every stronghold that we're holding on to to just cease. We command that every oppressive, possessive thing that is trying to take over us for it to just cease right now to break in Jesus' name. We speak healing in every person right now, physically, mentally, and spiritually. For every body and, and every person right now, from head to toe, we just command brand newness in Jesus' name. God, we ask for your presence to come in such a way right now, Lord, that it just is only you. That it's not me praying, that it's not, it's just you because you love us, because we are seeking you, because you are our daddy and you love to be with us. And we just want to be with you. Teach us to be like this, Father, when everything is crazy. God, help us to be like this, to just seek you this passionately when our world is crashing. God, help us to thrive in you when we don't even know how to thrive. <laughs> God, help us. God, I thank you for knowing that you hear our cries, you hear our voices. Father, we praise you, God.